This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on millets in daily life. The participants are Renu Amitav, millets enthusiast and baker, and Omvesh Upadhyay, AIR correspondent. Once a forgotten staple of traditional Indian cuisine, nutritionally dense millets are becoming popular the world over. So much so that 2023 is being dubbed the Year of Millets. There are nine kinds of millets cultivated across various regions in India, such as sorghum, finger millet, little millet, kodo millet, foxtail millet, and barnyard millet. These vary in color, size, and texture, but share roughly the same nutritional profile. Millets are versatile ingredients that can be used both in their original grain form in porridge and as rice substitutes or as flour to make flatbreads and other baked goods. And today, to discuss on this in detail, we are joined by Mrs. Renu Amitab. Senior bureaucrat, millet enthusiast, and baker. Welcome to the program, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. To begin the discussion, I would like to mention that since this year we are celebrating the International Year of Millets, dedicated to the promotion of millets and increasing consumption. How significant move has it been proved? This has been a very significant move by the government of India that we are adhering to and following this International Year of Millets. 2023 declared by united nations organization and in the past in 2018 we celebrated and we did this national year of millets by doing so what has happened is the focus of the government and the whole community has been towards augmenting not only the production but the consumption of the millets and knowing about being aware about its various uses and how beneficial they are to the mankind so the endeavor has been not only by the honorable prime minister of our country who is leading this from front that it should become a people's movement and gradually india should become a global hub of millets so in this way we are seeing that it is just 3 months have gone by and already there's so much of awareness and so much of buzz around millets which are our traditional grains and i think uh, we are going in a very very good direction and since we are talking about the promotion of millets and inclusion in our daily diet can you please tell our listeners the benefits and nutritional value of millets we all know that uh, this form of grain that is millets are traditionally being used in our households but of late we had almost forgotten and we had shifted to other grains which were refined grains so going back to these they contain a lot of iron calcium various minerals which we require in small traces vitamins like a and b they are full of antioxidants and very good soluble fiber which is very good to combat all the lifestyle diseases which we are mostly facing these days not only the elders but even the youngsters because of their lifestyle issues so they help in fighting diseases like obesity diabetes blood pressure cholesterol heart problems and so many other diseases of gut and digestion problems so by just consuming these millets we will see that they are going to really benefit us in all our diseases and all our lifestyle problems very well explained by you ma'am and ma'am since millets are seen as a climate resilient food what soil requirements are there for the production of millet and how can millet production at a large level can ensure food security as we are all aware in india more than 100 million people are still agriculturists and we are growing crops and we are also dependent on monsoon largely because all parts of our country they are not getting adequate facilities due to their terrain problem due to being such a large and diverse country so these grains are drought tolerant they can be grown in tough terrains like mountainous region places where there is low water low maintenance dry lands rain fed areas so in these areas also these millets can grow so they can give grains and food grains and provide nutrition also and it is good for fodder also so both for livelihood and also for nutrition these grains are very very good and very climate resilient especially in a country like ours so ma'am from your insightful information we can understand that millets are highly nutritious as well as they are climate resilient food resource so i want to understand here from you that can we add and consume millet in our daily diet 
Yes, very much. And we have been doing it traditionally. It is just, as I said, that off late we shifted to other grains and we were enamored by the fast food culture of the Western countries. So we forgot our own indigenous grains. So we have to start using them in our daily diet in the form of chapatis. We can add them to our chapati dough. We can use them as porridge. We can use them for our some sweet meats also. And there's a particular way of using it because people don't know about it. So what happens is they just start adding it to the flour and then make it a dough and start consuming it or add it to the porridge, just cook it and then start eating it. So sometimes it causes some problems. So the correct way of using millets is that we should soak them for a long time, say about five to six hours at least. Then we should cook them properly, either in the form of a porridge or chillas or add them to the chapati dough and then we should eat it. And also if you are making porridge or some other such thing which is wet, it should be kept outside for some time and then consumed. Then it will be good for digestion also and then it will not cause any problems of the gut. Plus the nutrients will get released. So that is the best way of using it. Soak it, cook it, keep it aside for some time and then consume it. Very well explained by you ma'am that because millets are heavy food, people who in general try to immediately add it in their daily diet suffer from some short of indigestion. So there's a general query on how to eat millet and I know that you have explained about it a little bit. So can you please elaborate on that? What is the process of soaking and how after which time we can eat that? Yeah, so as I said for a, about either overnight or about six to seven hours you can soak it and then if you are cooking it as porridge then on slow fire or even if you do it in pressure cookers it can be on sim or the low flame it can be made as porridge along with some nice pulses or with lots of seasonal vegetables and then after it is done keep it aside either in a pot made of clay like we used to do traditionally in our households and then consume it you can use it the same day and even the next day in cold weather if you are making chillas etc then always soak it and keep it aside the batter should be kept aside for two hours or three hours and then you should make your chillas or dosas with these uh, coarse grains and they'll be as good or even better than the normal dosas which we use only making use of rice and dal so this is how you should consume it and you can also use it in interesting products which uh, will be of interest to the younger generation and ma'am, that brings me to my next question that since millets are seen as a healthy alternative for gluten intolerance people, can we say that we can also make and use it for bakery products as well like cakes, pastries, brownies? This is uh, the question which is I think closest to my heart and uh, this is an area of interest for me because I have been experimenting with various baking recipes and I have introduced millets, all the millets for that matter in my baking products. So I am a recipe developer in the sense that I am teaching this to my community. That is anyone who comes along my neighborhood, school children, college children, my colleagues in office. So I always encourage them to substitute wheat and maida particularly which they are using in their bakes for millets. And I have seen that juar and ragi particularly and also kuttu, atta, that is doing very well. If you are allergic to gluten, then you have to replace wheat flour and maida with the, our millet flour. In that case, the recipes have to include some such thing which can help in binding, such as xylem husk, some form of starch or rice flour. But in case you are not allergic to gluten, then simply remove half the quantity of wheat flour or maida which you are using for your breads or buns or cakes and replace it with millet flour. So that works very well and it makes your bakes extremely healthy. And ma'am, if you talk about this, there's also a general trend that we are seeing among the Gen Z or millennials that they find the taste of millets to be bland or unpleasant and hence are reluctant to consume them. You said that you are also a recipe maker and a recipe developer. Can we also share some of the recipes for people like them or for parents who have younger kids and want to ensure a healthy diet for them by inclusion of millet? Yes, you are very correct. We cannot just go on saying that we should consume millets and elders may understand and because of their health conditions, they may start eating millets because they are fully aware of their benefits. But if we have to encourage the younger generation, we have to adopt a two-pronged strategy. 
नंबर वन लॉट ऑफ एडवर्टीजमेंट लॉट ऑफ अवेयरनेस क्रिएशन इन देयर स्कूल कॉलेजेस एक्सेट्रा दैट इज वन वे ऑफ डूइंग इट ऑन दी अदर साइड देर शुड बी सम प्रोडक्ट्स अवेलेबल आइदर दे कैन बी बेक्ड एंड मेड एट होम और अवेलेबल इन दी मार्केट विच आर एक्चुअली हेल्दी बट दे आर ऑल्सो डेलिशियस बिकॉज इफ दे आर नॉट टेस्टी देन दीज हेल्दी प्रोडक्ट्स विच आर मेड ऑफ मिलेट्स विल बी कंज्यूम फॉर अ फ्यू डेज बट अगेन दैट्स नॉट सस्टेनेबल सो वॉट आई हैव डन इज दैट इफ आई एम मेकिंग बंस आई एड सम मिलेट्स say half millet flour instead of atta or maida and we can also make such uh, pizza bases and uh, these pizza bases can be again topped with all the interesting toppings such as cheese and vegetables whichever things children like and they are very fond of but the base itself is very healthy instead of consuming a base made of maida which is actually very very bad for gut and that is why the youngsters are also suffering from type 2 diabetes at a very young age and all other problems like obesity etc if we start consuming the same pizza which is delicious but with a very healthy base i think we'll be making it a very sustainable proposition so the recipe is very simple it is just using three ingredients one is flour and second is some yeast and third is some liquid to knead the dough which can be either buttermilk or it can be just water as well so what we do is that one cup of atta and one cup of millet flour which can be jowar ka atta or ragi atta or kuttu atta so we take two cups of flour and then we add one teaspoon of yeast so any active dry yeast you can add straight to the flour and knead it with the help of one cup of buttermilk the only thing you have to remember is that because we are not using much of gluten flour we have to add either xylem husk that is isab gol or one fourth cup of flaxseed powder both these things are extremely nutritious and very good source of fiber so with this dough we have to let it ferment for about 1 hour and then make it into a form of a chapati that is flatten it like a pizza base and bake it for about 15 minutes so this pizza base is extremely nutritious and very delicious too and because you are using your in a regular toppings like cheese and vegetables so it is kind of camouflaging the taste variation so this is going to be a real hit with the youngsters and it is a good source of all nutrients and we are introducing millets also in their daily diet you mentioned about young people suffering from diabetes too these recipes were i think really be helpful for the listeners as well so ma'am what we have seen is that millets what we say in hindi is also seen as a rambal for patients suffering from diabetes or who are suffering from obesity can we say that inclusion of millet in their diet can help them lose weight or help them control sugar in a better way Yes this is absolutely true and it is proven that if you consume millets in your daily diet you not only lose weight because what happens is one they are full of fiber and you feel full after eating these grains so if you had a bowl of ragi or bajra or jowar porridge you feel full for a long time and you don't have that feeling of having food again and again so this is one aspect another part is because these millets have very low glycemic index that is it doesn't make your sugar spike so when we are eating normal carbohydrates which have gluten and which have a high glycemic index immediately there is a sugar spike so that is bad for our system and it leads to diseases like diabetes etc in long run and another thing is your hunger pangs come back so again you want to go back to your boxes full of some you know chocolates or something else which will satiate your hunger it is uh, seen that people who are consuming millets are really getting benefited both they are able to manage their weight control diabetes and also other related diseases like hypertension and cholesterol etc so they are very beneficial and i think everybody is experiencing it and even the doctors are recommending it with your insightful inputs and delicious recipes we hope that this program might be very helpful for the listeners thank you so much ma'am for joining us today thank you You were listening to a discussion on millets in daily life. The participants were Renu Amitabh, millets enthusiast and baker, and Om Vesh Upadhyay, AIR correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. 
You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 9289094044.